What's up guys, Bloodshed here. Welcome to the Necromancer Starter Build Guide for Diablo 3, Patch 270, and Season 23. In these videos, we take you from zero to hero, talk about how you're gonna build from level one all the way up into end game recommendations. These videos are heavily based around the challenge rift. If you haven't done it this week, save it until after the season is active. That way you can complete your challenge rift. It's really easy on North America. It's a rapid fire Natalia build. All you literally do is spam Reign of Vengeance and hold down rapid fire and win. And you get a juicy bag of materials. It's like 5 million gold, some death's breath. You can roll blood shards. You get a lot, like a little welcome package every single season as long as you save your damn challenge of cash guys you can see i completed it here but this was on my second alt account we won't talk about this guy right here we'll keep it we'll keep it on the dl before we get started if you could leave a quick like on the video it helps me immensely also don't forget i have a full website with all my push builds on it we even have a section for key farming solo paragon farming bounties slash low gr since they're similar builds you want to level up your low level gems or you want to run speed bounties these are the builds for you and then of course starter builds which is coming soon we're filming it right now just head over to bloodshed.com if you need any other builds we're going to start this off with level one blood shard recommendations some people will still do ask me why they roll at level one well, it's because if you roll at 70, for instance, with belts, look at all these options in the item pool that are available. But if you were to roll belts at, say, level one, the options go down considerably. We're talking about level one necromancer recommendations. You got to go gloves here. Incredible damage increase, a stacking multiplier, plus they buff the base damage of corpse explosion in the last year. This definitely does favor blasting rifts or doing high level cursed chests. Although you can cast Corpse Explosion at a range and chain mobs together like a Massacre bonus, it does work decently well. It definitely favors like high levels, like on softcore when you bump up the difficulty and really get to kick the rifts. But after you get these, you definitely can go for the Pox Faults for extra badassery. We did put a video out um, yesterday on the Pox Fault leveling method, but you can use this concept with any legendary you have. So these are my two early game recommendations for Necromancer. Remember, because we are good boys and girls, we saved our challenge of cash. You're also able to unlock your blacksmith to max level at level one. As soon as you log in the season, open up that challenge of cash. You can train your skills all the way to max and craft a level 70 item. For Necromancer, you're gonna do two-handed scythes because all four options are insanely good for the build. I would say the two outliers here are Relena's and Nayers as they synergize with the Rothma set, which we're definitely gonna go over this set today. But the Blood Tide Blade creeps, creates corpses for corpse explosion, and then so does the Bone Spear. It boosts your single target damage against like those pesky Rift Guardians, or just in general, it creates more corpses, so then you can spam corpse, corpse explosion even further. The only reason why I like Nayers and Relena's the most is because they both synergize with that six-piece Rothma to give you that early game boost. I actually use Nayers in my Rothma push build, so again, I have all the builds on the website. No matter which one you get, I'm gonna show you a starter build with all four of the weapons. So you're good to go, taken care of. Necromancer has an incredible start because of the reduced RNG on weapons, similar to how Demon Hunter only has two possible daggers and things like that. For your leveling skills, I really like to use bone spikes to try to keep up my massacre bonuses if you're doing that. If you're doing rifts, you can use whatever skill you want, like bone spear, just to pop a corpse and then use corpse explosion on top of that. You get corpse explosion really, really early. So if you do get the gloves running at level one to get the cube is super important because then you can get that multiplier right away. Some classes don't even get their skills till like 30, level 30-ish. 30 so it's awesome that Necro gets that big damage bonus right in the beginning of the game. I always use skeletons as they're like just free DPS across the board. Siphon Blood can have a small channel time. So using Bone Spike for that Massacre and Bone Spear, these two in tandem are really good together. And when you get Golem, it creates corpses. I believe the base rune does create about four corpses or five corpses, sorry. And then Flesh Golem creates eight corpses. So now you have an on-demand corpse button if you're on the Rift Guardian with no ads. Um, just wait for that golem cooldown, summon him, and then spam corpse explosion to do tremendous amounts of damage. I definitely would use Commander of the Dead as well. Reduce the essence cost of Command Skeleton, which you know, you're know you probably gonna use while leveling, and de you're definitely gonna use it with your six piece Rothma. And the cooldown of golem, so now you have even more corpses with a 30% reduced 
cooldown, which is a great synergy. Honestly, Necromancer is the fastest Rift leveler in the game, Witch Doctor is the fastest Massacre bonus leveler in my opinion. So you, you got the King of Kings here, you should have no problem with all these bonuses and just your souped up corpse explosion, you're good to go. Don't forget that the Templar has a level 20 cheat death ability called Guardian and it gives you five second immunity to all damage, which helps because Necro is arguably the squishiest class in the game. If you're playing on softcore while leveling or even early game, I definitely would recommend the Enchantress because you get 5% cooldown reduction as a base skill and every little bit helps. As soon as you hit level 70, the first thing I would do is head over to the Blacksmith. Remember we got to train to max level 12 for free with our Challenger of Cash. They changed the way the Sage set works. It's auto learned at the Blacksmith as soon as you hit max level and they added a belt just in case you've been gone a few seasons. Now every class can use the Sage set but so can your followers. So we're gonna craft a Sage set as soon as we hit level 70 and give it right to the follower. That way we get extra DBs on kill. And as soon as you get the cane set, you wanna equip that on your follower as well. Again, check the follower guide so you're up to speed on everything. I will have timestamps in the description and chapters in the actual video timeline so you guys can skip around if you're watching this on season start. This is gonna be your starter build whether you have grasps of essence or the corpse explosion gloves or not. I'm gonna slowly go through everything so you guys can see how to build. Basically your job, like we talked about, is to create those corpses so you can use corpse explosion to kill everything. You can actually solo the GR20 clear without the grasps of essence. It's really powerful, man. Having 1500% close quarters explosion is actually incredible. I'll show you a T1 demonstration with nothing. So I have a pack here. I'm gonna open up with the golem and then jump in and just start blowing things up. This is with no corpse gauntlets. You can see there's no multiplier down here, nothing in the cube. So we're just gonna sit here, create a corpse, and then start blowing things up with nothing. So on T1, you should have no problem using this build and going to Kane, getting your your four piece set bonus as soon as possible. Um, even when we blood rush, we're leaving a corpse behind and then those corpses create more corpses. And then it's just a domino effect, right? Along the way, cast them right here on this elite and it just does some good damage right here and you should have no problem. Again, you can even do it on a lower difficulty and you're probably gonna have one of the four items that we talked about and you're probably gonna have corpse explosion gauntlets along the way. So you go through, you get your Hadrug's gift, you're getting ready for your GR20 clear. Like what does it all do in the first place, okay? So this appears to be the final iteration of the rat set. It got changed a bunch of times over the PTR. So the two piece, your permanent minions reduce the cooldown of Army of the Dead by 0.5 seconds each time they deal damage, which is actually quite often. And your permanent minions are Golem, your revived minions, since the two piece also makes your revived minions no longer expire, and your command skeletons. So skeletons, revived minions, and golem. Those are your permanent minions, and that's what activates the six piece set bonus once we get it. The four piece, your minions no longer take damage, and you gain 1% damage reduction for 15 seconds, stacks 75 times. So you get a 75% damage reduction, which is incredible. It's almost like a band of might right away, basically. You can even run and get your four piece Hadrig like on master difficulty. You never even have to walk into torment, and you're rocking 75% damage reduction. So here's the nothing set with just the four piece. I'm just gonna go through it, that way you guys have this in case you wanna know how to build. And then you're, once you have your revived minions out, you're good to go. So let's go ahead and cast Army of the Dead here and then start spamming revive. That way we get that damage reduction. And we're quite tanky actually at this low level. And look at my cooldown. We have 27% cooldown because I'm rocking the Enchantress. Nothing in the cube, right? I'm not using any Paragon. No funny business here. You can see nothing here. Just the like diamond marquee baseline gem. It does work pretty fast. Let's cast Army of the Dead on these two elites here. Try to get them all. And it's just so powerful. You command skeleton and then you can start to see it. I command it pretty much every two, three seconds. It's good to get in habit of spamming it because that's how you're gonna play the top tier set. And it just bodies everything, right? And make sure you have your 10 revived minions out. Those are your permanent ones. I really like the set and I'm happy that it converted to an Army of the Dead set as it's one of the most badass skills in the game. So this is if you get the Bone Spear weapon. Just made a quick build to synergize with it. Here's the Blood Tide Blade. We're gonna use 
Death Nova, uh, Unstable Compound, Creating Corpses. Oh, here's a rat nayer ahead. It might be different. Let me just show you. <laughs> I don't even know. There's a rat nayer build, right? You want all poison skills with nayers. That's how it works. Here's the shadow hook version. So this time you want max essence. So it shows that with the paragon. And then you want to make sure you have max essence on your weapons to get that extra juice. So here's the six piece starter build. And again, we have like nothing in the cube that's going to affect testing. All baseline gems, no legendary gems, no paragon, nothing like that. Not even the corpse gauntlets or nothing, right? So I'm going to jump into something crazy like a T10 would work. Uh, let's just do T9 right here out the gate. It might be a little tough to get your revive minions right away, but you want to try to find a pile and then just immediately try to get those revive minions rolling in. We're at four. So remember, that's our damage reduction. I even have Decrepify here to lower the cooldown. So we have more Army of the Dead. Once I get my minions, I'll be okay. So we're at 10 minions, we're good. And then again, you wanna spam Command Skeleton, spam a Decrepify for the cooldown. We're using like a borrowed time rune to give us more cooldown. And then Army of the Dead. And that's it. That's why I even have it on right click. Even when pushing, I love to have it in a convenient place to spam over and over. Necro has a really good start. I really like the set, like I was saying. I like how it turned out. We haven't got proc'd yet. That's good, but oh, there it is. I was like, there's a lot of stuff going on. I might actually die in this video. Uh, okay, let's go over here. Let's cast this on him, show him who's boss. And remember, if you're on hardcore, you definitely don't want to bump it up like this. This is more softcore vibes. Or you at least want to bring the follower the templar to give you that extra cheat death one thing somebody in our community tested though which i haven't had a chance to look at if they're dead like because you know we don't have cheat death tokens yet if they're actually dead you don't get your immunity so you can even hold siphon blood back here just to be safe and you can cast it at range and then you can rock azaz and all that stuff look at us we're just biting gr40 man right out the gate with literally nothing the first legendary gem you do every Single season, you're gonna get that Bane of the Powerful. Like you're gonna have other stuff, other multipliers, right? And just start spamming. And then it takes a little bit of muscle memory. I'm still trying to get that muscle memory of just spamming it. That way you get the cooldown faster and everything like that. But I'm really happy how the build turned out. And I hope you guys kick ass this season as I'm really excited. Necromancer is probably gonna be my second class. I'm gonna start Wizard from there. But you get it, right? What would Blood do from here? I'd probably build out the speed version of Army of the Dead Rothma. Under key farming, it's right here. I really like this build. You port around, drop Army of the Deads. It's really satisfying. It has those vibes of like seven-sided strike, how you blow up the screen and then injiam I'm away. So from here, I would use my blood shards to either finish the Rothma speed setup or I would go into Bone Spear for sure. If you want to support the channel further, there's tons of links to social media in the description. Even just basically liking the video, sharing the video, subscribing to the channel goes far and makes waves. I have a second channel in the description where I cover like stocks and financial stuff. So check it out if you're interested. I'm definitely going to be playing all weekend long, hardcore, solo. Come check me out, twitch.tv slash bloodshed. That's going to be all for me today. I still got more videos to make before the season goes live. This is Bloodshed and I'm out of here. Peace.